Hello and welcome to Bad Boy Cinema. I am your host, Rick Reel. With me today is my co-host, Elliot, Elliot Film. Film. Yeah, that's that's who you are. How that's are you, Rick? Government name. I'm great. Why, why are we why are we turning the tables on me? I'm just I like... ask how you're doing. No one asks me yeah. how I'm doing. Okay. That's how I like it. All right, then do your job. <laughs> I, I I am. <laughs> what are you, okay, what are well, you talking how about? Am I? How how are you? I'm all right. <laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> uh oh, we're having some cat fighting happening uh, in the studio today. I think, um, I think the audience has heard the cat fighting. Oh, <laughs> um, so this uh, this episode is uh, about the 2000 uh, film mm -hmm. uh, Bedazzled, uh, the directed by. Harold R., um, mm -hmm. starring Brendan Fraser and Elizabeth Hurley, uh, which is, uh, you know, we've done remakes on this show before. And this is Very also true. a remake of the uh, 1967 British film of the same name. Um, never seen it. And I never will. Because uh, I saw yeah. this one, and this is the newer one, which makes it the better one. Better in um, every conceivable way. <clears throat> This did mm -hmm. you know that the the director uh, mm -hmm. Harold um, R. Ramis yeah. Harold R. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he directed uh, such films such as uh, Caddyshack, uh, mm -hmm. National Very Lampoon's true. Vacation, just the regular one, the Christmas Vacation, um, yeah. Groundhog Day. You know, and, he, and he's written well. Uh, he just he was a writer on Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters too. He did not direct That's those. True. He was, uh, but he 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 was he was involved in a lot of you know classic movies, and we talk about classic movies on the show. Uh, you know, and Bedazzled is a classic mediocre movie. <laughs> it's it, <laughs> yeah, it it's um... it's one of the big ones, but it's not. The best really movie. knocks it out of the park as a three star film, and it's it's a brisk hour and thirty minutes, and they don't really make movies like this anymore in general. But also movies that are just an hour and thirty minutes. Um, yeah, they don't make fun it, little romps, you know. It, it is a romp, it, and you know. Uh, so what the the core the core conceit of the movie is that Brendan Fraser's character, uh, Elliot's with, with one T mm -hmm. not Elliot not me. film with two T's. Uh, so they, when, they, when I heard it in the movie, I was like, Whoa, this movie's about me. Uh, it's not so unfortunate. You're, you're not, you're not, <laughs> you're not, I am not literally. Yeah. Elliot. Rogers. Although I did, I, when I was watching the movie and this is going to mean nothing to, to, uh, most people, but our, our close personal friend, Arthur, uh, mm -hmm. I found the the voice cadence of Elliot in the movie um, similar. It, it was it was really evoking our friend Arthur for some reason. Um, yeah. Just a little tip of, tip of the hat to uh, a friend of the podcast, Arthur. Um, but yeah, no, the core conceit of the movie is that um, Brendan Fraser's character sucks and is really annoying, and uh, the devil played by uh, Elizabeth Elizabeth Hurley. Hurley. Who one of the all time devils? She she one of the one of the most uh, devilish depictions of the devil in uh, in cinema, and uh, so Elizabeth Hurley as the devil gives uh, Brendan Fraser seven wishes. Uh, of course, no, none of the wishes go well. One of the wishes is, which I think, and I agree, you know, it, it's litigated in the movie, but she she's like, I can give you wishes, and he's like, I want. A Big Mac and a, and a large Coke, which was three fifty at the time of the film. Yeah, which that was egregious. That really hurt me personally. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I was like, well, that was probably the thing that impacted me the most was how <laughs> cheap a Big Mac and a Coke was in two thousand. Um, and, and boy, is this a two thousand ass film. 
uh, be all, yeah. all the wishes, all the wishes go bad, and, and the wishes end up, uh, you know, putting Brendan Fraser in, in funny little interesting vignettes, and that's kind of just, you know, and then and then it kind of ends, and that's the movie. Yeah, and that's great. You you kind of and, love and that it really does Brendan just Fraser. kind of end. He runs out of wishes, and they're like, "Well, time to wrap this up," and then. <laughs> Yeah, he ends up spoilers for bedazzled. Uh, he's he, you know, does not. He meets a girl, devil, and then he gets a girl <laughs> who was by the same actress as the other girl he was interested in the entire film, which I didn't realize until reading the Wikipedia page. Um, Shout out Wikipedia. Yeah, um, yeah. So you you, you had you your letterboxed uh, review, right? You, you know, yeah. you had that. Um, um, what uh, what are your thoughts? You know, plugging the the Elliot film letterboxed here, real quick. Yeah, shout out letterboxed. Um, so I I reviewed this three stars, but I did give it a liked it. I did like it. It's 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 fine. And, you know, I throw it on the background for sure. But it's a three Absolutely. star, maybe two and a half star movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just said the costume designer put their whole badussy into this film, and I agree. Honestly, honestly, I would sell my soul to them for the privilege of watching Elizabeth Hurley look slick all day, as they say. <laughs> um, I love the costume design in this film; they really nailed yeah. it. Not just the devil, um, although she does all the all the all fun day. little outfits that they put Brendan Fraser in were all really good, and and the makeup was also pretty. Yeah, pretty on point. It was, you know, believable, and and the acting that Brendan Fraser had to pull off here. It's not the whale, but you know, uh, he had to do a whole lot of different characters because each of his wishes kind of would turn him into a, you know, surface level different person, even if he was the same annoying guy uh, in all of them. Uh, which is maybe the point of the movie. And he kind of grows a little bit, and then uh, then he then he gets a girl because I guess. God and the devil felt bad for him. I don't, <laughs> I didn't really. Yeah. There's, you know, sometimes you just get the girl, I think is the, the moral of the story. Yeah. You know, one door closes and another door opens and it's the same person. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. kind of the vibe that I got. Uh, it's interesting. <laughs> like on some level, you're like, you had a, a crush on this girl this is a totally different woman who's played by the same actress uh and he's like yeah good enough and on some level you're like that doesn't make any sense but when you realize he's never spoken to the first girl he's never had a conversation so all he they're just like co- they've like. existed near each other the whole for four years and he's like never talked to her he's like i'm in love with this girl which yeah relatable <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, if that's all you know is just what she looks like, I guess it doesn't matter who it is as long as they look like that. Um, which is maybe not the best message to send, but it's Holly weird after all. Am I right? So true. Holly wild. Um, yeah, perfectly this, this serviceable movie has, uh, 90 minute film. It's got a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it's got an average review of 5.5 and Metacritic has it at 49. Look, uh, I won't say this very it's often. It's very in the middle. I won't, I won't say this very often. All those film review websites, they got their finger on the pulse of the freaking nation, dude. Yeah, they know they, they, they really nailed it. Everyone collectively it on has the one. right opinion about this movie. Con- consistently, though, those websites are wrong, but in this case, you nailed it. Um, it is crazy to have so 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 many stronger writing and directing credits, and yeah. then like late in your career, you just kind of like crap out bedazzled, and it's fine. Like it's not you know, yeah. Your box office wise, I, you know, the budget was was forty eight million. It made ninety eight point three. It did fine, you know. Um, and obviously, it was a cheap movie to make, considering there there was only like. 10 actors in the movie and they just kept replaying different parts. <laughs> so with each of the different, you know, wish vignettes, yeah. uh, which was your favorite of the little wishes that he had, Obvi- uh, not counting 
the the 350 Big Mac. I'd be like, I wish mm-hmm. I had a Big Mac for 350. You know? Yeah. Um. Well, we can litigate that in a minute. But to answer your question, my favorite, uh, I think my favorite wish vignette was um, when he was the most sensitive man in the world. <laughs> He really looked like a completely different person in that one. And when he was the basketball guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, is that Brendan Fraser? You know, if I, if I was the basketball yeah. guy, I was really interested, like how they made him sweat so much. How do they <laughs> do that within the film? Cause his hair didn't get wet. His <laughs> hair was not uh, <laughs> the microphone. I don't think got wet. It's just like him. It's like they gave him a sweat disorder for one scene in the movie <laughs> and then cured him. Um, well, so, so the, okay. let's see, the, the first wish was he's a, the Colombian drug lord. And well, the, the first uh, wish was the Big Mac and Coke. Well, right. Yes. Well, or was it, you know, I think, Look. I think she made that wish for him before they made the deal. So I don't think that counted. And also he paid for it. Look, if you if you were just sitting around in your house and you're like, I wish I had a sandwich right now, and then somebody in your house, perhaps one of your cats, brings you a sandwich, you're not like, well, oh, that doesn't count. I could have done this myself, but you didn't. Somebody For him, else... he did do it. They went to the store, the, the yeah. McDonald's store. And but he, he was wishing for it, and he made no action until there was external again, enforcement. I mean, my, my bigger issue is that it, this was before it was the not contract within the contract. Yeah. So I think it that it was it was even if it was a you know if you want to litigate if it if it I, have, as a I haven't not. personally read the fine print of the contract. Um, it was very long. It was very long. So you know it may have said including previous wishes granted by the same individual, the devil. Yeah. Um, Unknown, to be but honest. But anyway, so there's the Big Mac wish. Mayor, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe counts, maybe it doesn't. Um, then there's, he's the Colombian drug lord, and the, the downside is that he's cupped. Um, then he's the most sensitive man in the world. Which is fine. Which is fine. Just, like, just deal with it, dude. She doesn't love you. You didn't say that part. You're married. Uh, marriage doesn't mean love. Uh, then when he's the most sensitive man in the world, um, the downside is that he's the most sensitive man in the world and is also cucked. Um, yeah. and he, she still like loves him, but like not like... She was like, oh, he's so won't. sweet, but like, I'm not going to go home with him. Yeah. This motherfucker um, cried at the same sunset three times. And then was it basketball after that? Um... Yeah, because he was like, I don't want to be sensitive anymore. I want to be tough and strong. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. rich. And rich. And so he's just like incredibly mentally not the sharpest uh, yeah. basketball player and um, is very talented, but his, his, his wiener is small. So that's... That's true. That's no good. Um and the love interest just like laughs at him and, and leaves. <laughs> like I like that. it's like is is the love interest just like actually a bad person that he's just been oh absolutely to? <laughs> absolutely. Uh, and then um, then the next wish he's like a very suave, uh, charming, classy, guy. Yeah. classy guy. And but the downs downside, and I'm using it with the framing of the movie, not my own personal beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> is that he's gay um so he, he still you know he brings her home and he's like i'm not gay because it's like his, his boyfriend or whatever is there and then he like kisses uh the love interest and he's like oh never mind see ya <laughs> uh, and then yeah. uh and then he wishes to be the president yeah and i wish this is my favorite waste. gag in the whole movie because he he becomes president like immediately realize that he's Abraham Lincoln and that he's about to see a play. <laughs> he's like, God damn it. <laughs> uh, she got me. That I didn't one, specify. Um, yeah, I think that was the that was the that was six, including the Big Mac, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So, and then the seventh wish, he just wishes for, you know, everyone after to be talking, happy. After talking to God in prison. Um, yeah. He just wishes for um, the love interest to be happy or something. Yeah, something stupid like that, which is a loophole, gets him out of the out of the contracts for selling his soul, and uh, and then he's fine. And then and then he meets a, a girl who looks exactly like a love interest. Although I didn't clock that, yeah, immediately or at all. <laughs> and then the movie ends. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's fine. It's it, you know, we, and we talk about older movies on this podcast, right? Talking about older movies, and uh, we usually say, "Wow, they've aged pretty well," or "Wow, this is this is still enjoyable." You know that even though this is a bit of an artifact, it's still enjoyable in in the current yeah. era. Um, the the dazzled very dated, in my yeah. opinion, <laughs> incredibly dated. The humor's <laughs> dated. Um, you know the jokes. Well, that's which is the humor uh, is, is yeah. dated. Um, the the like so the devil's supposed to be like hot, but it's a very like two thousands hot i i think she's smoking to be honest i i think that they nailed the costuming <laughs> i mean this I, movie, I did not i did not get anything from it i was like okay she's i did i don't know i think it's i think it's fun i think some of the gags are definitely um <laughs> not what you would do today if they were to remake Bedazzled again, yeah, the, the movie is like slightly racist. Uh, yeah, not in a good way. Not which it, none of the ways would be good. But it's, it's just uh, good to specify. It's just good to specify. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's 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 dated in that sense. Um, again, I mean, you you disagreed, but I was like, I you know, this is a very two thousand idea of what like. A hot girl devil. I think movie. I. I think that's. I'm not disagreeing. I just think that I have 2,000 brain. That's and and you do. We know, and that's um, futuristic from my point of view. <laughs> right, because you know we, we were frozen yeah. for so long. Yeah. Um, even her being British, like you know, I was just like, yeah, it's this is old. I don't know. They were to remake this movie, like uh, what ethnicity have, would she be if they made it today? Uh, she would definitely be either some ambiguously brown ethnicity or like someone who's like half white, half black for sure. Yeah, um, I don't know her name. I'm gonna find out her name and then I'm gonna tell you who it is. Who I like, would they, cast. they would make like. I don't know. I don't know who they would make, but it, it would not be a like a real thin British lady. That's not who they would pick in in in. Uh, okay. Maybe right to do that. I'm going to tell you who I would cast. It's Vela Lavelle. Uh, who is Vela Lavelle? V e l l a, love l l. It's like love two. Love two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, folks at home. Look it up. Look They'd have like up. Jamila Jamil if they wanted to keep the British thing. They get like Jamila Jamil to be the devil. That she'd be really it. annoying. Yeah. Although I thought this devil was annoying. I don't know. Yeah, I wasn't sold on the devil. I think that impacted the the enjoyment of the film. But if I was like a like a forty year old dad in two thousand watching this movie, I'd be like. I'd mm-hmm. be like, I'm into the devil. I'm I'm sold on this <laughs> this hot devil lady. But I was just like, yeah. I, I have two modern sensibilities. Of, I'm a big fan of Elizabeth Hurley. Really? I was like, I had no idea what she was in prior to this. She was in uh, uh, Austin Powers One. Yeah, I've never never saw that. Oh, we gotta, um, you gotta. I mean, we're not gonna do one. an episode on it probably, but you gotta watch it. <laughs> I mean, what can we say about Austin Powers that hasn't been said already? True. Because uh, people are talking about, well, we could watch. I mean, she's also in uh, Phoenix Wilder and the Great Elephant Adventure, uh, which I don't mm-hmm, think anyone sure. has talked about. Uh, yeah, that's one of those they don't even have. They don't even have uh, 
a box office number on on this um, or anything at all on the Wikipedia page. There's no reception. It was just released <laughs> in 2017 and then on DVD in 2018. And they don't have any, no reviews, nothing about Phoenix that's, Wilder and the um, Great Elephant Adventure. That's great to hear. Honestly, we'll be groundbreaking. I mean, the people are be- on, they're probably begging for the content on this. Yeah. She didn't really, I think Bedazzle might have ruined her career based on just looking at Wikipedia and not having seen any other movie that she's been in other than Bedazzle. Okay. I think it might I'm, have tanked her career. I'm seeing, I'm looking it up. They changed the name of the movie. From so maybe that. Phoenix, Phoenix Wilder and the Great Elephant Adventure? What is yeah, it now it's now? just an elephant's journey. Um, you don't get to meet the character until you're in the film, and that's, you know. I guess they were worried about spoilers. Yeah, they don't want you to know that. This is the movie with Phoenix Wilder in it, right? Yeah. Elephant's Journey. It's a dollar on Apple TV, (laughs) so to just like own it or to rent it. (laughs) To rent it, it's. I was like owning it. I'd be like, shit. Um, I mean, it's two dollars to own it. That's two dollars Canadian, so that's that's bad. Yeah, because um, I I assume just everything up there costs double here. So it two does. of your dollars is one of mine. Um, Absolutely true. Although we are in the same studio, it's just we're right on the line. Yeah, and we have, there's two different doors, so you come in from the Canadian side, I come in from the American side, and yeah. record right on the line it's very it's very uh the the, the, the set design here in the, in the bad boy cinema studio is really something i wish you guys could see uh, yeah maybe one day we'll incredible. do video episodes uh but you know yeah the costume yeah. So the, the, design goes crazy but since we're not filming i don't wear them <laughs> yeah and, and the producers get really upset about that but you know what what can you do right uh, mm-hmm. Elephant's Journey has a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, so maybe we don't. Maybe we don't see it. <laughs> maybe we skip that one. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, what what other thoughts do you have on Bedazzled? Bedazzled. Um, Bedazzled. I did like some of the, the gags. I yeah, the Abe fun. Lincoln, the, the entire Abe Lincoln sequence. I thought it was very funny because it's like, you know That's what the great. joke is as soon as you, you get into it, but it's like, yeah, I wish the whole movie was as good as that <laughs> chunk. Yeah. Um, and then also I, I did also like when he was the most sensitive man in the world, but that's like such a very like 2000 early two thousands, like character yeah. archetype, like, and like yeah, aesthetically. that character um, would be very different today. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, the, the younger fans of this show, um, I don't think they would they would really understand that, you know? They haven't been around as long as we have. Um, that's they, true. They wouldn't, they wouldn't get it. Um, and that's fine. You know, they're, they're not really missing much, honestly. But, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, do, you think, do you think the movie wanted you to feel bad for Elliot? Because I did not feel bad for him. I was yeah, like, I, don't, I know this guy. At I was going to say it's sucks. very hard to tell because they do right, yeah. really focus on making you hate him for like ten straight minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the opening, know. yeah, like 10, 15 minutes of the movie is just he's the worst person you've ever met. He's so annoying. He's not doing anything wrong. Illegal. He's he, or would, even bad, like moral. You know, he's not doing anything. You know, he's just annoying. He's just really annoying. And uh, yeah, they really, yeah. they really nailed Doing that, that I, for 10 minutes. And then he's like, I could have anything in the world. Let me force a woman to be my wife and uh, <laughs> yeah, also like have all, all the power and influence. Um, And like the movie tries, like, I think to try and. You know, in between each of his wishes, like I think there's like a there's like usually a he's small in between connecting scene that shows that he's like a little less annoying. But then yeah. he just makes like an even stupider wish or like an even more so like 
more selfish wish and then uh you know i think his problem and you know to break the bit a little bit when i saw this movie growing up um my problem was you have seven wishes don't put them all into one yeah. don't make your entire life a single wish you know do one yeah. wish you're like i wish that i had you know a hundred dollars deposited into my bank account untraceably from each of the hundred richest billionaires on earth disguised through various small transactions that's it that's the wish and then your second wish is like i wish that i wrote a book that sold eight million copies because it's so well loved and i am smart enough to write books spread it out yeah well it, communism the, the end wish. of the movie because he's like i don't want the last wish because like these are all not going well i'm gonna mm. be the president but you're gonna make me the one that gets assassinated so like i don't know about that um like he's just like i don't want to really like do anymore and the devil's like no you, you gotta do it and not, not only do you have to do it you have to make your wish like soon and i was like well you're just trying to like wrap up the movie because i think yeah. the logical conclusion is that he's just like i'm done you know like i'm not, I'm not fucking wishing for anything anymore this sucks yeah and i think that should have been like he should have been able to live until he's like 80 uh with one wish in the tank and she just has to deal with it but i didn't yeah, read the, the contract devil care? what does the devil care she's i mean time to the devil has got to be just meaningless right yeah you're the devil and then you uh, know when you're 80 you're like i wish i was 27 again and then like you're fine you know you know what this movie reminded me of as like a worse version of, of a you know a, a movie that people like. I can't think of it. Click. Mm. Yep. Kind of had huge huge click vibes, but like clicks a good movie. It does have, does have huge click vibes. We should do a click on this show. Uh, um, sure. Yeah. We can do like a you know some Adam Sandler as like a as a, as a subject for a month, right? We can do Sandler month, you know, get, get some Sandler movies, uh, I would classic do Sandler, month. Film. Sandler month might, might kind of go off, you know, we could, we could I've fallen off of on my Sandler watching post click. Yeah. Click, and click, but click really is a good, it is, is the same idea basically as, as this movie. Yeah but uh better in almost really every other than costume design uh, yeah costume design does not possible. hit no. Would, i mean it's not uh, bad it's just it's just you know it's fine it doesn't it's not doing anything special it's not trying to but bedazzled at least you know they spent some of that 40 million on the costume design and it shows it absolutely does um would hat, you, you know? would you think that bedazzled would be better if it starred Adam Sandler. <laughs> um, Adam Sandler being Abe Lincoln, would that... It? <laughs> I think it would be funnier, but I, I think I would hate the ending more because I would find... Because Brendan Fraser, you, you want to you wanna root for him, even if he is the most annoying guy on the planet. Yeah. Uh, so the ending, you're like, yeah, that's nice, I guess. But if it was Adam Sandler, I'd be like... It's like if Uncut Gems had a good ending. Yeah. Is probably kind of what, what I would feel with Bedazzled. I would find it very totally off. Yeah. But it would be I, a lot funnier, uh, even if everything else was exactly the same. Yeah. What about if Clicks or Brendan Fraser? See, I think that would also be fine. Honestly. I think it would be fine. It would it might even be an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> uh Brendan yeah. Fraser. Yeah, what did he do after he did? Well, you know, didn't do a whole lot after this for some for some reasons. But uh, he was know. shoplifting, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, because he was doing a whole lot of stuff early on in his career, yeah. and just sort of um, and then and then stopped being in things, uh, which is fine. That's his right. 
He was in a few very good episode of episodes of Scrubs, if you would recall. Uh, I wouldn't. Oh, so yeah, hit the, the the Brendan Fraser episodes of Scrubs are like all time bangers. You know, the whale. That's fair. What is the plot? He was in Killers of the Flower Moon as well, but he was just kind of he was kind of wailing out in that as well. Mm. Uh, I did like Looney Tunes back in action. I thought I thought he kind of nailed it. Yeah. Oh, he was in uh, the Nut Job. 2014's the Nut Job. I have not seen it, to be honest. Yeah. I did like Dickie Roberts, former child star. I think that's a good film. I don't remember him in it. I guess he has a cameo. Mm, the Mummy, um, Tomb of yeah, the Dragon. Yeah, I think Emperor. his best film. Now that I'm looking, now you may disagree. I think his best film is Blast from the Past. I don't think I've seen Blast from the Past. Oh, we got to do Blast from the Past. Yeah, got to do Brendan Fraser month as well, and then compare it to the Adam Sandler month. And then you know, really yeah, get to the bottom of back to back. Yeah, I okay. can <laughs> be fine. Um, this could be the start of Brennan Fraser month if you want. <laughs> well, the chronology of <laughs> the recording of these episodes makes that very confusing for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what that need means. to do a little <laughs> Christopher N. Um, playing with time. I really hope we can get to Inception on this. Uh, God, yeah, I love day. that movie. It's, it's a classic. It's a classic movie, and I think um, gets scoffed at, and also praised by like for the wrong reasons by different groups. Like they're both wrong, even if they have opposite opinions. You know. Yeah, having the right opinion for the wrong reasons. Yeah. It's just as bad as having the wrong opinion. Can you have the wrong opinion for the right reasons? <laughs> yeah, I do it all the time. Yeah, that's pretty true. Um, I wish there was more to say about Bedazzled, but um, it's just fine. Yeah. Would you recommend people watch it? I would recommend uh, people put it on in it the was, background. If it, if it was on TV already, and you're, you're scrolling through the TV, you know, cable, which, uh, as I hear, people will very love outdated. To do. <laughs> All right, well, you know, uh, if it was on TV and it was on, yeah, I'd throw it on in the background and then, like, you know, tune in for the funny vignettes and you'll because, like, at least for me as a kid, this was on in the background while my parents were actively watching it. And I was like, you know, playing with Legos or whatever. And I distinctly remember the Colombian drug lord and, yeah. uh, and the most sensitive man in the world. Like those are seared into my mind. Um, yeah. Shout out the most sensitive man in the world. What most a, sensitive man in the world. That was, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, it was, it's fine. I mean, yeah, if it's on, I'd watch it, but I wouldn't go out of your way to, because unfortunately yeah. it's just, it's not very interesting. <laughs> it's, it's moderately yeah, funny. Kind it's mildly of... offensive. Uh, you kind of know weird. what's going to happen the whole time. Yeah. I think if you've seen 30 minutes of this film, which is a third of it, to be fair, um, you have a better idea of what's going to happen the rest of the movie than they did while they made it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that makes sense because they figured out the movie by the time you're watching it. Uh, yeah, and this might be a hot take, but... Um, one of my favorite fictional depictions of God might be this in this movie. Interesting. I was like, this God, he seems like a really chill hang. Yeah. Yeah. I was like way better than, uh, than, than like Bruce almighty God. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, you know, he was a lot. I can't, also. I can't really think I, he was a lot. I can't really think of other. Uh, God, Steve Buscemi in um, Miracle Workers. Didn't see it. Uh, oh, you you don't need to actually. It stars Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> it's a TV show starring Daniel Radcliffe, um, where he plays an angel. Yeah. Cool show. Good idea. Horrible writing. 
Uh, it's yeah. like if the writers of Bedazzled tried to make like the Good Place meets Parks and Rec. The good, the Good Place already is the Good Place meets Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. like the whole. That's like the point of the show. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I've seen parts. It's very, um, uh, it's it's very weird, it, and I think maybe why I like Bedazzled a little bit now and movies of of its of its kind of comedic stylings you might say uh is that it is at least a sharp contrast to a lot of the like the the shows that are listed as comedies but are not funny they're just kind of like nice yeah not that this is a show it's a movie but like watching a movie that is just trying to be funny and is not interested in being nice it, it, it has a nice ending but the movie itself is like kind of I wouldn't say mean spirited, but yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a little eh, you know they poke fun at certain stereotypes. It's at least like, refreshing. I like a little mean spiritedness, you know. Yeah, it is. You know, it's filmed in places. It is certainly filmed in places, which I mean, they don't. They're not making movies like that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what um, what's going on with like location scouts. Are you okay? Do you have job security? I think all the locations have been scouted. It's probably just like millennials are ruining <laughs> location scouting business. Um, yeah, like I don't know. It's fun. I I it just is- think it's fun. I think if you have nothing to do. You could watch this. You're not going to have a bad time. You're not going to have you a could, bad time. You could sit down and actively watch this if you're not doing anything else. Or if you're like, I could scroll on TikTok for a bit. You know, like, you know, you're fine. That's also Don't a good worry. way of watching it, too. <laughs> yeah. This movie's probably yeah. on TikTok. Um, yeah. Perfectly yeah, serviceable fun. film. It's got some fun moments. They do, you know, as an evil devil twist, make someone gay. <laughs> but it, like, and you phrase it like that, and it makes it sound offensive. But like, the way it's actually handled is like, it's, it's not, not that offensive. It's not that. It's it. not. It's like kind of tasteful for two thousand. I'm like, yeah, it's that's kind of funny. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're not dropping any slurs in this movie that I recall. They're doing fine. Um, and he's not like that upset that he's gay. He does completely erase his wish and make another one, but he's not that upset. <laughs> his life is great, but <laughs> yeah, since he can't get the girl because he is gay, I guess that's not that's not it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, I guess it's like that. That's not great. It's like, but, like gay yeah, people yeah. can't have love or be happy. But I think that's a an Elliot Richards issue where he can't find love or be happy uh, because he's broken. He's well because he's just projected his, his wife's yeah. you know desires onto a person who has never talked to him. And, yeah, uh, doesn't like him. <laughs> yeah, although he was so annoying though. But his coworkers were like unnecessarily mean to him as well right nah i don't know that they were even that mean to him they're just like now we're not hanging out tonight because he was really forcing himself into a hangout maybe he, well yeah mean, uh, the co-workers yeah, just get me. along with everybody else except him they're, they're kind of razzing him a little bit they were they were kind of giving him shit for yeah. liking a girl. That's true. But he was doing it in kind of like a loser way. So I don't, I don't know. Like if they were actually his friends, like the razzing would make sense, but there are people who are established who don't like him. So I'm like, yeah, it feels mean. Whereas if your friends saying the same stuff, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. You know? Yeah. There needs to have a good nature underneath and there yeah, isn't. And, there and that's, yeah. that's Elliot's fault. <laughs> yeah that's that's true um 
the yeah, downside. I didn't I didn't feel bad for him, which was which made the ending not feel sweet to me. I guess it yeah. was supposed to be, but I was like, I don't care if this guy's happy. This guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> really, the core the core failing of the movie is that it might be a little too mean spirited for its own good. Yeah, but a little bit is nice. It is, it, yeah. And that's bedazzled. That's bedazzled. And uh, you should check it out if you want. It's fine. Check it out in the future. Check out a different Brendan Fraser film, maybe. Yeah. Um, did Did you like Did you like this more or less than Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Because I believe that would be our um, most mid movie. Yeah, I would say that this is. I don't know. I think I liked it more. It's funnier. But it's very close. Yeah, it's just like it, it's funnier, but a lot more dated. Uh, whereas, like, like I think if I was actively watching something, I'd want to watch Bedazzled. If I was watching something while scrolling, I think Mister and Missus Smith is better. Yeah, but it is close. They're both not the best movies. <laughs> Yeah, and that's fine. Not at look, movie studios, you got to learn from this. Don't only make blockbusters, you can't just keep making blockbusters. It's crazy. You got to make some dumb movies that make you you know their their budget back double. You know, like in the year 2000, there was one, maybe two blockbusters a summer. Now you're doing like three a freaking weekend. No one, especially now, no one's going to the movies that much. You can't be like, oh, nobody saw The Flash and it had a $150 million budget. Yeah, it's because everybody saw Oppenheimer and Barbie the weekend before or whatever. Stop, make a make a $40 million Brennan Fraser vehicle. Make today. The Whale 2. Make the whale, but he's skinny. See, see what that is. <laughs> Make a click remake starring Brendan Fraser. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do like the the de aging you did in the Irishman. Not that he needs it. Just just do it anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Turn him into a baby, like in those weird commercials. Um, yeah. Also, movie studios, I know you're listening. Bob Iger, I know you're here. Um, really, I know Bob Iger's not responsible for this, but you know the people. You have the contacts. Release uh, Coyote versus Acme. That's my call to arms. I would love to do Coyote versus Acme episode of this. So, you know, well, they're not putting the fans, media, so. fans, you know, uh, do a petition on change.org or whatever. Um, yeah. Make Joseph well, let's, let's Biden make discuss this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would love Coyote vs. Acme. Apparently it's very good. Uh, but no one will ever see it. And they're going to burn all recordings of it. So we well, may have to like do... put it on YouTube and just like, you know, get 10 cents of ad revenue. Because they're they're using it as a tax write off. If they if they scrap it and nobody sees it, they get like thirty million dollars in tax breaks. But or then they they're scrap like scrap it, but like not actually, and then release it later. <laughs> yeah, Just scrap it, and you're like, no, nah, actually, it's fine. It's Hollywood accounting, baby. Do whatever you want. Um, so we might have to do Looney Tunes back in action. I don't think we'll do Roger Rabbit. We could we could do Looney Tunes back in action. Oh, Space in Jam. I've never seen Space Jam. You've never seen Space Jam the original? Never. Mm-mm. Oh, you're not gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I will. <laughs> you would like it if you saw it as a child, but you're not. Yeah, gonna no, like I think it. if I saw it when I was six, I'd be like, yeah, but. Yeah, you'd have nostalgia for it now. You'd be like, there's charm here. 
we're going to do it. Watch movies I never saw as a kid that yeah. are no longer. Stuart Little 2. <laughs> ever seen it? No. Like Mike. So. Ever seen it? It's got Lil Bow Wow and Jesse Plemons. Jesse Plemons was in things before Breaking Bad. (laughs) Yeah, you (laughs) like Mike with Lil Bow Wow and Crispin Glover and Jonathan Lipnicki. What a star-studded cast, honestly. Lipnicki might be one of the greats. I want uh, Jonathan Lipnicki as an adult to um, play Dade Murphy in hackers mm-hmm. i know you really like hackers i, I love i hackers. watched hackers last night um yeah honestly truthfully this is not a bit i think it's my favorite movie <laughs> and yeah. if they were to remake it i want adult jonathan Lipnicki playing the lead character what i is, still want He's, I don't know. I think he's living off his Stuart Little money. His Jerry Maguire. Well, he looks totally different. He which does. Makes sense. I just assumed he would be that same kid, but. It was same haircut, Jerry. same glasses, same teeth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's in just stuff. Like, no, he does things. Does he? A lot of them don't have blue text on Wikipedia, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's John L. up to? He's uh, got something coming out this year. There's a worst true. cooks in, in America in the celebrity edition in 2019. This has got to be the worst ratio of blue links on Wikipedia I've ever seen. Well, yeah, it's not. It's not great. Um, <laughs> Really fell off after Stuart Little 2, it looks like. Um, yeah. Then, you know, that's your fault. All right. Uh, let's, let's wrap up Bedazzled. Um, thanks for listening. Email us at badboycinemafanmail at gmail.com. Let us know what you thought of Bedazzled. And if you haven't seen it, go see it and then let us know. Let us know if it's anything different than three stars. Did we miss something? This yeah, is is your there, opportunity are there Easter know. eggs in this film? Um, like in Beyond the, the tip of the hat to you by naming the character Elliot, and it was just with minus the T, just so it's not too obvious. But yeah, like can yeah. I copy your homework or just change it up a little bit so they can't tell? Yeah, um, that's that's what they did in the. In the beginning of the film, Elizabeth Hurley, before we know she's the devil, is playing pool. Let me know if she's hitting the six ball three times. Um, I didn't investigate that, but I'm thinking about it. They probably did that bit. They probably love doing little cheeky things. Surprised the Big Mac didn't cost $6.66. Anyway, um, <laughs> send us an it email. It does now. Think send about us that. an email. Whoa, crazy. Um, let us know what movies you think we should cover for Adam Sandler month, Brendan Fraser month. Um, what's, I don't know. Any other months? Uh, Looney Tunes month. We'll do a Looney Tunes month one day. Sure. Why not? Uh, I'm lying. So it doesn't matter. All right. That's the episode. Goodbye. (laughs)